Hi YouTube, Brian Phillips here with a boondoggle for you tonight. Uh, this comes to you from a question from uh, Weekend, Oklahoma. In your typical fashion of overcomplicating things, <laughs> you want to slow down your landing gear, which is perfectly reasonable, by the way, because slow landing gear look awesome, similar to what we've done on the ASH-26. But the ASH-26 is not using a serverless retract, as you surely know from watching all the videos, it's a regular servo. So of course we can slow that down super easily in our radio configuration. But when we're trying to slow down a regular retract, things get a little bit harder. Okay, so I'm going to show you this wire is coming off of this plug which goes into my retract, which is just a loose retract that's got a paintbrush in it for simulating weight. This is my power from the, this is called a retriever, that's what I've called it. And what I do is I stick that on the end of poles and then I can use it to retrieve uh, parachuters or little gliders or things like that that unfortunately end up on the neighbor's roofs. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I used it for. So, and it works really nice by the way. Um, but that's not what this video is about. I just happened to have it set up. Okay, so real quick, so the power is applied now to this dead end, which is doing nothing right now. We'll show you what that's for later. And right now we have power going to the retract, so it will work, okay? So I have a test for us. I'm gonna run the stopwatch, okay, coming from the starting position of up, okay? One, Mississippi. Okay, so it took about 3.71 seconds. Let's try it again. One two, stop. Okay, so about, it's somewhere between 3.7 to 4 seconds. Okay, so we've got that cleared. We'll start from this position. We're going to disconnect power from the local receiver, which is this receiver, and basically all that is is an FPV system that has a pincer on it. Okay, so now you've seen that. Everybody can go back to paying attention to this. Um, this wire is now going to be energizing from 1S now, just to show you, this will work with just a regular receiver pack voltage, okay? This is another little receiver that we have here, or excuse me, not a receiver, but this would be the BEC, uh, which is ultimately going to power whatever you've got hooked to it. Get your polarity right. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you this works. It'll be about the same speed. Okay, so... Oh, I didn't get it. I didn't get enough contact here. There we go. Okay, so I'll stop this. I want to start from the same position so we get a good test. Okay, so down and back up. Okay, so it's 4.25. So it's just a little bit slower probably because of the difference in voltage in the battery pack. Okay? <clears throat> but interesting you should say that, Brian. What if I wanted to run it on one cell? Well, let's try it. So we're somewhere between... 3.75 and 4.25 for a down up cycle. Okay? That's on one S. I want to make sure we're not getting pressure on the end of that sweep. Okay, so starting from the top of the sweep. So it took almost five seconds. So as you can see from this really simple test, what we've got going here is that the voltage out of this pack on one cell, which we're just tapping the one cell, is going to be significantly less than the receiver voltage, and so we slow down the operation. But we don't shut it off. Now, you do have to tie your ground from this receiver to that BEC, in this case, which is common to the negative lead. Okay, so you couldn't plug this into the second cell set uh, because your common would be off by a factor of 3.7 volts or 3.4 or whatever the charge is of that particular cell. So don't try that. I'll just show you the voltage here. Oh, uh, what do we have? Negative over here. So let's see what the voltage is of that individual cell. Looks like we're at 3.85 volts. Okay? So cell two's dead on this one because it's a piece of crap. So that being understood, what we've got going on here 
is a mechanism to run a retract slower. Now, is it a lot slower? No, it's not. So really the only way I know to slow it down beyond that would be to use a different type of cell because obviously lithium polymer cells are gonna run somewhere from 4.2 on the top end, fully charged, to about 3.1, 3.2 at the very low end, and you'll be getting into voltage alarms. So if you have a mechanism to run it on a different battery pack, you could get away with something less. In fact, we're gonna try that next. Okay, so I took one AA battery, and actually this AA battery holder was supposed to hold two, so you get like three volts. Uh, looks like it's pretty low, it's at 1.36 volts here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to operate this system on the lower voltage, okay? So, let's see what we can do. Okay, so we can unplug this. I don't care about that right now. Okay, so we plug that into the breadboard so that I can do this without causing a problem. And we have our polarity correct. Okay, so now we should have our 1.35 volts to this thing. So as you can see, nothing's happening. Okay. So if nothing's happening, that means that at a certain point, we're going to run into a voltage limit. Okay, so let's try it with 3 volts. Make sure we're making contact here first. Okay, so we're going to stick the other battery in there, which will bring our voltage back up. That'll test all the media we're using to get between all this crap. Yep, and there you can see it's working. So anyway, part of the rationale behind doing this test is to prove that it is a little bit slower at the lower voltage, okay? So let's reset the timer and we'll try it again. Okay, so what I'm doing is starting from the top, down, back up. which took significantly longer, but I screwed up, so. I'm gonna start again. It's kinda hard to do both at the same time here. Okay, so starting. And all the way out, as you can see, we took uh, about eight and a half seconds. Okay, so let's get a really good test this time. Okay, so we'll start from down, we'll go up this time. There's, and then back down. Okay, so now that took nine seconds, but I had to toggle it a couple times, whatever. It's nine seconds, fine, good enough. So now let's go right into the receiver voltage of the host receiver, okay? So it's very quick. So that's about three and a half seconds. So as you can see, guys, you can run these things slower if you don't mind wasting a ton of time and effort. Now, if you really wanna slow something down, this is really the easy way. So I'll just show you on my, my retriever system, okay? So the retriever system Obviously, this is the gear, right? Okay, so you can see the gear switch. Now watch this, servo setup, speed. Okay, so you go to gear, scroll it up. Scroll it up to like <clears throat> five seconds. So I'm just gonna show you why it doesn't work, okay? And then I'll explain why it doesn't work. Okay, so it's set to five seconds, right? So one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, C. It's just waiting to send the signal, right? Um, so what's happening is the sweep of the pulse width modulation goes from here to here, right? You can see that in your monitor mode, which you could also see in the servo setup. So here's gear, right? See how it sweeps? 
So there's your five seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five. Okay, all right? So what's happening is inside of here, there's a potentiometer just like there would be in one of your servos. And instead of having a sweep potentiometer, it's got a linear potentiometer. And the linear potentiometer slides along a rail and you have to see the end of sweep to get the right resistive value to know that we've reached the end of the sweep, okay? And then it knows to shut off the motor, okay? Which is different than what you would have with a servo. Okay, so there's a circuit in here that's doing controls. That's why you can't slow it down, okay? Now we can slow down the time it takes to respond, but we can't slow down the sweep without changing the voltage, which runs the motor, okay? Now, thinking that all out loud makes me think there's probably a way to do that, but it would entail changing the, uh, the actual sweep on the potentiometer there. So anyway, um, I'm gonna show you on one of the servos here. These servos, uh, just so you know, are tied to, hold on, I'm gonna tip this so it's kinda sitting still. Okay, so they're tied to two different axes, two different axes. See that? Okay, now watch this. I'm going to go in and slow them down. So that's the aileron axis. So we'll go from travel to speed. So we'll set it to like uh, six seconds. Nothing magical about six seconds and then ten. Okay? What the heck? That doesn't seem to be working. I must have a mix in there, guys. Oh, that's right. I'm hooked to the other aileron. Okay, so let's just try the elevator. It's going to be easier to demonstrate what I need to demonstrate. See how slow it is now? That's working the same as it did, but now it's really slow to move. And you can tell by looking at this output, okay? And that's what people want to do, even though I've got the stick all the way down. That's how long it's going to take to get to the throw. So you can change the speed in most of the programmable radios, okay? We'll put it back to normal, and as you can see, it's fast now, okay? And I've got weird mixing in there, so I'm sorry about that. It's not probably the most clear example. But either way, you guys get the idea. Um, basically, right now, if you want to slow down your landing gear, you're going to have to design a new control circuit on your retract, or you're going to have to reduce the voltage to the motor. And there's more than one way to skin a cat, guys. But remember, if you reduce the voltage to this, the negative side needs to tie to the negative side of your receiver or your BEC, or your SBAC, or your UBAC, or whatever it is you're using to provide power for your battery elimination circuit, which is what energizes all of your servos and everything except for the motor, of course. The motor, of course, on a brushless configuration is going to be powered in a different circuit. So, anyway, that's about it, guys. Hope this helps. Week in Oklahoma. Hope this helps. Proof of concept passed. Now we just got to figure out the voltage at which it'll actually cut off. Now, be careful, guys, on these things. If you run them in high voltage, um, you can burn out the motors. So, and I have to assume that if you get to high enough voltage, eventually the, the brushes will wear out quick, too. But who wants retracts to move faster? Not me. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe.